Hey everyone, welcome to Allie and Friends. I'm Allie and I'm here with my friend Martha. Hi Allie. Hi everyone. <laughs> hey Martha, how's it going? Pretty good. Well, we are so thankful that you're here today and we're so thankful that you're here too. You guys make this show, so thanks for joining us. And we have started this important new series called Faith Over Fear. If you've missed any of our previous programs, just go to wilmotcenter.church slash kids to check them out. <laughs> so Martha, how was your week? It was great. I went to school, played with my friends at the park. Oh, the bestest thing about my week was that my mom took me to watch the new Paw Patrol movie at the movie theaters. <gasps> that sounds awesome. How was it? Well, I don't want to spoil it for any of the kids watching, so I'll just say that it was amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you had such a fun time. Mm -hmm. I did have a great week, except near the end. Oh, sorry to hear that. What happened? I had a disagreement with my friend. It started out as a silly fight, but then she really was mean, and now we're not talking to each other. I'm feeling really angry and sad. I just want my friend back. I want us to be normal again. Aw, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Thanks, Ellie. Well, what do you think I should do? Well, usually the best place to start is prayer. And I know that's sometimes the obvious answer, but it's often not where we start. So what if you told God your feelings, even though he already knows, of course, and pray for your friend? That can be difficult to do when you're mad at somebody, but if you ask God to bless them and for them to be happy, God helps us to have compassion for them, and he helps us to love them. Good idea. I should probably tell my friend how she made me feel so that we can work on the problem together. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's important to be able to tell people how what they said or did made you feel. Maybe this is a good time to pray with all our friends. I think that's a great idea. Let's do an Acts prayer together. Each letter in the word Acts stands for something. The A is for adoration, which is telling God how amazing he is. The C is for telling God our confession, which is telling God about the things you've done wrong and wanting to turn away from them. And the T is for thanksgiving, thanking God for everything you have in your life. And the S is supplication, which is a fancy word for asking God for things that you need. That can be a good time to pray for any relationship problems you're having with your friends. You can ask God for things as well. He wants us to. So how about I start the prayer off and then you guys and Martha will fill in the blanks by praying silently to God. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. So let's get comfy, close our eyes, bow our heads, and begin. God, we come before you today and want to tell you how great you are. Everyone repeat after me. God, you are. God, you are. Now tell God how amazing he is and how much you love him. God, we are sorry for the things we have done that are wrong. Everyone repeat after me. God, we are sorry for. God, we are sorry for. Now tell God some of the things you shouldn't have done. God, 
God, you have given us so many wonderful gifts. Repeat after me. God, we thank you for. God, we thank you for. Now tell God what you're thankful for. God, I thank you that you tell us that we can ask you to supply all our needs. Repeat after me. God, I need. God, I need. Now tell God what you need or how you need his help. God, I thank you for today. Thank you for everyone listening. And I pray that we all have ears to hear your lesson today, Lord. You are a magnificent, loving God. And we're so, so thankful for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. We just praise you and give you all the honor and glory today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. Well, thank you so much for praying with us. And now it's time to get up and move. Right, Martha? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Exercise time. Come on. I want to see everyone getting up and moving with us.
exercising felt good. Oh yeah. I feel energized, refreshed, and ready to learn. <laughs> Good to hear because we're talking about something important. We're talking about how to have faith over fear. It can be a scary world out there, but we want to be able to stand strong and have faith in God. I remember last week you blew up a balloon to show us that some things exist, even though we can't see them, like air. But we know it's real because we feel it or we can see what it can do. Like how your air can blow up the balloon. You mean like this? Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Let's see if we can see it leaving the balloon like last week. No, we can't. But I certainly could feel that. Let's try it again. Ready, Chester? Yeah. So remember, we can't see air, but look, we can see what it can do. All right, Chester, let's see if you can feel the air coming out of the balloon. Uh, <laughs> wow, that was a strong gust of air. Nice. Well, air is similar to God. We may not be able to see God with our eyes, but we can see him working in our lives. Like when he brings someone into our lives to be kind to us or when we feel him close to us and we know we're safe. We can't see God with our physical eyes, but we can see him with our spiritual eyes in our hearts and we can experience him all around us. Do y'all remember the Bible verse that tells us what faith is? In Hebrews 11, 1, it says that faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Great memory. Nice Chester B. Higglebottoms. The B is for bunny. <laughs> Let's say it all together. Do you guys think you can say it with us? Yeah. I'll say it first and you and Chester will repeat it. All right, let's try Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. It is being sure of what we do not see. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Today, we're going to be looking at a man, man named Enoch. Can you say Enoch? Mm. Enoch. Excellent. Enoch lived a long time ago, back in the Old Testament, before Jesus was even born. He believed in God and was someone who pleased God. Yeah, it says that. Wow. Allie, how do we please God? Great question. Well, in the Bible, in Hebrews 11, it says it is, it is impossible to please God without faith. Oh, I remember how to have faith. It's knowing that God exists and putting our hope in Him. Sweet. Excellent job. So we learn in the Bible way back in the book of Genesis that Enoch lived 365 years in close fellowship with God. That's right. You heard me. 365 years. Oh. That is a long time. <laughs> yes, it is. People lived longer back then. But the very important thing is that Enoch walked with God, which means he had a close relationship to God. And that's a, a very important way to overcome fear. Remember, kids, it's okay to feel fear. It's a natural feeling. But God doesn't want us to stay fearful. He wants us to overcome or get rid of fear by walking with him. That's a good way to put it. Let's do an exercise right now. I'd like everyone to close their eyes right now. Can you do that for me? Maybe bow your head. Come on, no peeking. Okay, now I want you to picture something that scares you. 
Do you have an image in your mind? Keep your eyes closed. Now imagine that Jesus is holding your hand. Or better yet, that Jesus has picked you up in his arms. Are you picturing yourself with Jesus? Are you still afraid? Knowing that Jesus will take care of you and protect you? You don't have to answer this out loud. Just think about it with your eyes still closed. Take a few deep breaths and keep picturing Jesus with you. about you but when I close my eyes and picture Jesus right there with me it's like all my worries all my fears just melt away and I feel peace and love all over my body how about you Chester well, I can't say it better than you Allie. <laughs> well I hope that you guys realize Jesus is with you every second, every day. Now on that note, let's get our Bibles out. And it's time for Take a Look in the Bible. It is time to take a look in the Bible. So if you don't have your Bible, go run and get it now because it's so good to look up scripture in the Bible and become familiar with this life-changing book. So the Bible is broken up into two main sections. We got the Old Testament at the beginning and the New Testament when Jesus came down to earth and lived. Uh, that's at the back of the Bible. So we're going to be looking up a verse in the New Testament, so it's sort of towards the back. It is in a book called Hebrews. And the chapter we're going to be looking up, the big number is 11. And the small, itty bitty number in is the verses, and that is verse 5 and 6. So let's first start by finding the book of Hebrews. So let's do it together, all right? So let's start. I often start by splitting my Bible in half. And then remember, we're going to go towards the back of our Bible, take a bunch of chunks. And you might see uh, the beginning of the New Testament is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Keep on going, keep on going. You might see Romans. You might see Acts before that. Keep going all the way until you find Hebrews. It's actually a tricky one. Let's see, it's right after Philemon. Then we got Hebrews and once you're there, the big number you're looking for, like I said, is 11. Usually that number is at the top of your Bible. It says Hebrews 11. So keep flipping until you see that. If you've gone to 1 Peter, you've gone too far. Or James, that's a bit too far too. All right. So if you can't keep up, don't worry. Please don't worry. I will read the verse for you. But if you're at Hebrews 11, Scroll down, you'll see those small little numbers all the way until you get to five. And I'm going to read five and six right now. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. 
This is the verse we've been talking about today. Interesting fact about Enoch, he didn't die. Did you catch that in the verse? It says in Genesis 5, 24, that one day he just disappeared because God took him. But the important thing that we can learn about Enoch is that he had faith in God and walked with God all the days of his life. So let's take a short break right now. And when we come back, we'll talk more about what it means to walk with God and how walking with God can help us to have faith over fear. a refreshing break here with us today after a long time is Nicodemus. Hi. Hey Nicodemus, it's so good to see you again. Good to see you too, Ali. Did you have a good break? What have you been up to these days? Well, my older sister became a mom. Wow, you must be quite far apart in age, right? I have 10 older siblings. Whoa, that is remarkable. How do you like being an uncle? Well, it's pretty great. Do you like babies? Yeah, they're so cute. Nice. Well, Nicodemus, I hope you had fun dancing around with us. Did you? Oh, yes, I did. Nice. I like to learn about God, but sometimes my head hurts from all the thinking. But now that we're back at it, I have a question. What does it mean to have a relationship with God? Well, sometimes it's helpful to first think about human relationships. Pretend there is someone you, who you have never met before. Let's think of the steps that take place to have a relationship with that person. First, pretend I've never met Nicodemus before. Someone has to tell me about Nicodemus. They might tell me his name and that he, what they're like. They might say, yeah, his name's Nicodemus and he's a really nice person. Well, the next step would be to meet the, the person, right? Hello, Nicodemus, I'm Ali. P pleasure to meet you. Hello. <laughs> That's the second step. Then the third step would be to spend time with them, get to know them. Hey, Nicodemus, what's your favorite color? It's blue. Nice, nice, just like that. And as you get to know them, you start to trust them and to keep the friendship, you continue to spend time together. Nicodemus, do you want to go out and have some ice cream together? Yes! Nice, just like that. Well, it's similar with God. Someone like your mom or your dad or a friend may tell you that God exists. And that would be the first step. And that God came to earth as Jesus to die for your sins. Now, the second step might be that you personally meet God. 
which means you realize that he exists and you put your faith in Jesus. Then you spend more time getting to know God by reading the Bible, praying, or going to church. Then you start to trust God more and more. And to walk with him, you continue to spend time with him by talking to him, reading the Bible, getting to know him, and meeting with other Christians can help too because they can help you get to know God better. That makes sense. Do I have to do all those things to become a Christian? No. Doing those things like reading your Bible, going to church, do not make you a Christian. Remember, becoming a Christian is putting your faith in Jesus. But those things will help you to get to know God better. And as we've been talking about today, it will help you to fight any fear you have. Every day we can take steps towards God to strengthen our relationship with him. Being close to God helps us in times that are difficult, like when we feel scared. Remembering that God is with us, carrying us, will help us get rid of fear. I'm here with Penelope to talk about what we learned today. Hey Penelope, how's it going? Hello. How are you doing today? Pretty great. Nice, nice. Well, we'd like to know, Penelope, what was one important thing you learned during today's lesson? Well, I learned that this really old guy in the Bible named Enoch pleased God with his faith and walked with God his whole life. And when I choose to walk with God, God will take away my fear. Great! It is so important right now to remember that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He wants us to trust Him instead. Yeah! And we have a Bible verse for you to look up with your family this week. It is 2 Timothy 1, 7. Nice. And the memory verse for this month is Hebrews 11, 1. Yes, that's right. You can try and memorize that with your family. That would be amazing. Well, thank you, Penelope. And now it's time for our favorite segment. The weekly challenge. <laughs> your challenge this week is to think of one way you can walk closer to God. You can ask your parents for some help in thinking of different ways and they can also remind you to actually do it. Maybe it's going to be praying or talking to God more or spending some time closing your eyes and playing some worship music. There's so many different ways you can walk closer to God. So maybe your parents can help you to do that this week. All right, guys. Before we let you go, let's pray one last time together. Sound good? Yeah. All right. God, I thank you for each person watching. I thank you for their life. I thank you that they have a purpose here on earth that is so great because it comes from you, God. And I pray that each person listening will know that you are their God and that you have given them a special task on this earth to spread your love and your truth. Help give them courage to do that this week, Father, and help them to walk closer to you. I thank you for giving us um, your word where we can look and look at different people and how they lived and that we have Enoch as an example of someone who walked close with you all the days of his life. And I pray that each person here will walk close with you all the days of their lives as well. God, we just thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Anything else you'd like to say, Penelope? God love you. <laughs> 
Awesome. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye.